would like to talk to you today about the humble pierogi. For those of you that may not know what a pierogi is, it is a boiled dumpling, about half moon shape, commonly associated with Western European countries of Poland and Slovakia. I personally feel that a traditional pierogi is full of potatoes or kapusta, which is a sauerkraut type filling. However, you can fill, find them filled with a spiced meat or a dessert pierogi that has a delicious uh, fruit filling in it. They are generally served boiled, baked, or fried. Fried with a little bit of butter and onion. Delicious. I learned how to make this delicious dish from Babci. Babci means grandmother in Polish, and Babci was not any grandmother. She was my great-grandmother. Babci came to us from Poland in, she migrated to the United States in 1911. And she lived to be 100 years old, which means that for much of my childhood, I had the opportunity to get to know her, learn from her. And one of the traditions she brought with her from Poland that she shared with all the women of the family was how to make a robot. A few weeks after Thanksgiving every year, the women of the family would gather in my grandmother's kitchen and it would turn into a pierogi making factory. <laughs> for hours, the women would make pierogi for Regilia, which is a traditional Polish Christmas Eve festivity, large dinner. And it was at this event that I learned how to make pierogi. Now, there are many steps <laughs> to making pierogi. <laughs> And every woman had their responsibility with their traditional apron. <laughs> <laughs> Making pierogi starts with the dough. It is a very simple recipe of simply water, egg, salt, and flour, but don't be fooled on its simplicity. Making the dough was only done by the most seasoned pierogi makers because what's very important is the consistency of this dough. It needs to be nice and smooth, not too sticky, not too dry, and definitely not too firm. Very, very important. So once you have a nice dough that's rested for about 10 minutes, moves on to the rolling procedures to roll out a nice thin dough. This responsibility tended to be that of my second cousin. She'd start with taking this dough and nicely working it in her hand. She can flip it into the uh, pasta roller, and roll it into a nice, long, thin sheet. Once again, not too thin, not too thick. With this, we used a very precise cutting tool to cut a nice circle, which was the base for a pierogi. Coffee mug. <laughs> <laughs> now that we had this wonderful base for a pierogi, it was time to move on to filling. Filling was made ahead of time. So one could argue filling technically is the first step to making a pierogi. And whomever actually took the opportunity to volunteer and do this activity before was generally opening themselves up to a bunch of scrutiny. One year, my aunt brought the potato filling. And the uproar when we lifted the lid, and rather than a nice smooth mashed potato, it was lumpy. <laughs> it had skins on it. <laughs> now, on this day, I was actually able to learn a lot of nutritional value in the skin of a potato. It actually has lots of vitamins and minerals, and therefore you should never peel a potato. You should just eat those skins. Well, I was quite impressed with this newly acquired knowledge. I don't really know all the other ladies of the family were sold on this. <laughs> but back to the progy making. Take a nice dollop of this filling and place it in the center of our circle. And we are on to edging. And I, I was an edger. <laughs> it was an honor to be an edger. Not anybody can be trusted with edging. And I sat proudly next to Bakshi and she taught me the very importance of edging. You see, there's two types of edging, one for potato, one for kapusta. And if done improperly, the people at Wigilia won't know what they're putting on their plate. And if someone who's not a fan of kapusta, it's very, this is very important stuff. 
Etching starts with folding the dough in half, and then you pinch and fold and pinch and fold and pinch and fold until you're to the end for the potato pierogi. The nice, flat, wavy dough. The kapusta pierogi, a little more trickier, and Bobchi and her daughter were left to that particular. What only looks like I can describe to you as a zipper on the edge of the pierogi. Once etched, it moves on to the boiling pot, which is quality control. If any failure at the other point, such as that sticky dough, too thin, or maybe you overworked it while you were edging or didn't actually seal the edging, the boiling pot's going to let you know. And the result is it's terrible, absolutely terrible. <laughs> you end up with a broken probe. And that's only one way to solve this. you got to eat that thing right away. <laughs> so those that pass, the boiling pot, move on to the very final step where they're stacked in this very thick pan, smothered with butter, and then placed in the freezer for the great feast. As you can tell, Provi and my family is a bit more than just a delicious meal to share with those at Regilio. It is an opportunity to welcome new women into the family to teach the younger folks <laughs> this new tradition. It also fostered collaboration and teamwork in something that really could be considered a daunting task. And all of this was done with joking, laughing, and sharing stories with some of the most incredible women of my childhood. And each year, I still make pierogi every Christmas Eve. As I sit down and edge my pierogi, I think of all the women who shared and taught this tradition with me, and my bocce, who taught me the most important secrets about the perfect edging. Thank you.